Welcome everyone uh, to our PCS seminar series. It's a great pleasure to have Boris Alshuler with us today. Uh, let me say a few words uh, about him to those of you who don't know him, which is probably quite improbable, but still. Mm -hmm. uh, he studied physics uh, at Leningrad State University and finished his diploma in 1976. He moved on and finished his PhD in 1979, and then he stayed there for the next 10 years. And in 1989, he joined the faculty of uh, MIT. And while being there in 19, 1993, he uh, received the Hewlett Packard Europhysics Prize and uh, became also a fellow of the American Physical Society. Then he left MIT in 1996 and went to Princeton University. And uh, then he had uh, several other affiliations, but most importantly, he then moved, I don't exactly know when, uh, to Columbia University in New York, where he is still, uh, where he is still since that time. Okay, he is a famous uh, uh, theoretician in quantum matter physics and is uh, famous for many uh, works, but in particular for is on works on disordered electronic systems, uh, uh, quantum interference corrections, uh, the famous Alshuler Aronov corrections, and they also developed together with the same Aronov the theory of defacing and relocalization, and uh, with Boris Shklovsky the theory of level repulsion disordered metals. He did many other things, and many of us know him uh, for his work on many body localization, which he pioneered together with. Igor Alena and uh, uh, what's his first name, Basco? Denis. Denis, thank you, Denis Basco. And uh, which in, I'm, I'm, big, I'm, I'm reciting here from Wikipedia. Uh, and then it says <laughs> that it was observed, this many body organization was observed experimentally by the group of Manuel Bloch in Munich, Germany. And I think uh, I should maybe add that the I, I was witnessing many, many talks on, on many body localization, including many people who now try to actually disprove the existence of many body localization, which I think personally, to my case, is one of the greatest things you can do in theory. If you do something when the whole world tries to prove that you were wrong, you certainly did something right. So <laughs> that I, 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 I yeah. should stop and uh, should uh, ask uh, Boris to take uh, the, uh, the senior, please, okay. Boris. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it's as usual, great pleasure to be here. I don't know who know exactly how many talk I will give in this room, uh, but quite a number. And uh, today uh, I would like to uh, present uh, a work which uh, Emil Yusbachan uh, did with some of my help uh, quite recently. And uh, being here in uh, uh, in the fall, uh, uh, he uh, already was speaking uh, about this, uh, I believe, here, but uh, since then there are some uh, uh, some uh, changes. So uh, now I think I can present it in a little bit less uh, technical and more uh, uh, and more physical uh, way. So it's all about uh, Electron phonon interactions uh, in uh, solids and uh, its uh, uh, influence uh, uh, on the properties of electrons, namely on the uh, effect of uh, superconductivity. Uh, and I want to tell that this uh, story about uh, how uh, strong. Uh, can be uh, electron phonon interaction, and as a result, how high can be uh, critical uh, temperature uh, of uh, superconductivity. It was uh, in the center of attention of uh, many uh, great people, and Phil Anderson, together with uh, Marvin Cohen, uh, from uh, uh, Berkeley, uh, wrote this uh, paper, uh, and uh, where they discussed uh, the uh, possible limits on the uh, critical temperature, and uh, we were speaking about uh, electron phonon interaction and 
uh, lattice instabilities. And uh, if you want, uh, as you can see, a lot of time passed in the uh, more than half a century. Uh, and uh, uh, now we understand uh, a little bit more, but still not uh, enough uh, to tell uh, for sure whether uh, there can be room temperature uh, superconductivity or not. But in general, I want to uh, uh, speculate a little bit about electron phonon interaction and properties uh, of solids. So uh, to start with, uh, what do we know uh, theoretically about superconductivity? And uh, the uh, first instinct is to tell that we know almost uh, everything since uh, BCS theory was uh, uh, invented. Uh, we have uh, theory of superconductivity. And uh, this is actually true in a sense uh, that uh, we have a feeling of understanding physics, uh, but uh, at the same time, this uh, BCS uh, theory is not uh, uh, is not a quantitative theory because uh, what we, you actually have, even for uh, uh, weak uh, BCS coupling, uh, you have some uh, constant uh, which is known as uh, lambda BCS, uh, which appears in the model and. Uh, there is uh, no uh, alternative uh, way of uh, determining or measuring this constant without measuring either uh, critical temperature TC or uh, superconducting gap. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there is this very uh, important energy parameter, uh, which uh, is usually connected with uh, the by frequency or the by energy, uh, omega d, uh, and uh, this you can uh, measure in a different way. Uh, but uh, still, these connections uh, they involve certain uh, constants uh, which are, in a sense, unknown. So, what is indeed prefactor in these two uh, formulas is uh, uh, not. Uh, very clear, and uh, the only only quantitative prediction uh, of the PCS uh, theory is this uh, relation between TC and delta, uh, with this uh, factor point uh, fifty seven, which is uh, in fact not very uh, exact uh, when you deal with the uh, uh, with the uh, real uh, superconductors. Maybe uh, because uh, lambda BCS uh, for real uh, uh, for real systems uh, is never uh, too small, and uh, whole theory is theory of weak uh, interaction. So, uh, as I told, this uh, provides us with qualitative uh, understanding, uh, but it's not quantitative theory, and. Uh, there is uh, no uh, uh, there is no uh, idea uh, what is this BCS uh, interaction and where it comes from, and uh, the uh, effect that uh, shed uh, shaded some light on that was so-called isotope effect when people uh, uh, started to compare uh, uh, samples which differ. By only by isotopic uh, content uh, of the atoms, and uh, uh, found that there is a change of the uh, transition temperature. And uh, this was uh, the argument uh, in favor of uh, electron phonon interaction being in the heart of uh, superconductivity. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the reason was that if you <laughs> change nothing but only uh, mass of uh, each uh, ion, uh, then uh, the by frequency will change and nothing else will change. And that's why uh, you can uh, change uh, both TC and delta. And uh, this is true, uh, but uh, at the same time, again, uh, uh, 
uh, again, there are uh, materials where isotope effect has uh, wrong sign, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it brought the uh, idea that at least in uh, many uh, materials, uh, superconductivity is due to the uh, electron photon interaction. Can I? Yeah, you can. I have a question, but maybe do you know the story of this? How just idea to test the uh, materials with various isotopic composition arrived to the to the inventors of this? Because it, it seems for me really weird to, to test something about latest vibrations when the, we are dealing with the superconductivity. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, actually, it's not the answer to the question, but. Uh, I know that uh, there were uh, um, people, uh, for example, uh, started to grow certain materials uh, in uh, in their space, and then these materials were brought to the earth, and nobody knew uh, what to do with that. And then uh, our colleagues, uh, just for curiosity, would take them and measure everything that uh, they, they can do. So. Uh, what was driving maybe curiosity, maybe somebody uh, had an idea that it is a certain form of interaction. Uh, I don't know, but uh, if you want, we can make uh, a search who was the first to, to measure this. Anyway, uh, so we need a quantitative theory, which starts with certain uh, electron phonon uh, interaction and uh, give us a real uh, uh, quantitative uh, uh, estimations of the important uh, parameter. And uh, there are uh, two uh, limited cases uh, when people speak about uh, effective Hamiltonians, which uh, are uh, electrons and phonons. And the simplest one is uh, uh, Holstein Hamiltonian, which uh, uh, describes the interaction uh, uh, between uh, electrons uh, and so-called Einstein uh, uh, phonons, which have no dispersion. So basically, this is the model is the following: our each of our atoms is a, a harmonic oscillator uh, with uh, uh, this uh, Hamiltonian, and uh, it's coupled with the uh, electron density, uh, and uh, this is known as Halstein Hamiltonian, and uh, a bit more sophisticated uh, is so-called Froehlich Hamiltonian, uh, where uh, we have, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, electronic part, uh, which is more or less analog of the first term. Uh, and then instead of this harmonic oscillator, we have uh, this set of harmonic oscillators, which are uh, uh, which are marked by uh, their uh, wave numbers Q, and uh, there is this uh, uh, interaction written in uh, second part. So, in the first Hamiltonian, the phonons are classical essentially. Uh, well, uh, yes, but uh, you will get uh, this immediately when you uh, only, uh, uh, instead of omega zero there will be mm -hmm. uh, the frequency of, the, of this oscillator. And of course, again, uh, there is alpha and there is some mm -hmm. uh, prefactors that depends on Q. Okay, but uh, uh, later I will try to convince you that uh, there is no big difference for what I want to tell between uh, the two and for simplicity, I will have in mind uh, this, uh, uh, this Halstein Hamiltonian just because uh, it's uh, similar. So uh, there is this uh, frequency, uh, which is square root of ratio of the uh, spring constant and mass. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, the uh, coupling constant uh, G, uh, which is connected with this alpha, and there is this electron density of states. Uh, and uh, effective interaction uh, between uh, electrons is uh, described by this uh, 
uh, potential uh, which is uh, frequency dependent. So in a sense, it is uh, retarded and frequency dependence is uh, such that at frequencies uh, smaller than uh, uh, cell frequency of this oscillator, it is uh, frequency independent. So it is a uh, single time. And then uh, at a larger frequencies, it decays as uh, one over omega squared. Yeah. yeah. So in usual lattice, we consider the elasticity. Yeah. That means uh, relative displacement between two atoms. But here yeah. you have. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, if you do that, you will get some uh, dispersion uh, of the uh, phonons. Uh, this is the limit when each atom is more or less independent. And uh, then uh, omega zero uh, is, uh, uh, doesn't depend on Q and equals to omega the frequency of the oscillator. If you start coupling these oscillators, you will spread all your normal modes into different cubes. So in weak physical limits, that this uh, Z is the correct uh, uh, summation? Well, it, it, it depends on what is your dispersion and what is characteristic energies. So when I, you, your temperatures are much smaller than the by frequency, then uh, using the Einstein phonons is not a good idea. Uh, but uh, we will speak about temperatures that are relatively high and then uh, the difference between these two is not very important. What's the by energy? Uh, so, uh, typical scale. Oh, okay, let me uh, tell you. So you have a lattice. Yeah. So each excitation and phonon is characterized by no, no, quasi momentum. It's just a number. It's just an, ah, an, okay. a scale. What was the typical by energy? Uh, so if you take a simple, uh, simple metal, yeah. it's about 100 Kelvin. Yeah. Uh, 100, maybe 200. So uh, I will speak about materials where uh, uh, this characteristic uh, frequency is much, much higher. Uh, but uh, in simple materials, it's about time. But then the typical transition temperatures are much, uh, superconducting temperatures are much smaller than that. Yes. So you are never in this regime where you are at temperatures higher than that, uh, than the divide energy. Uh, yes, but what I'm going to discuss are materials which, uh, Critical temperature is high. Hypothetical materials or whatever materials? No, 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 existing materials. And they are not cuprates. So, uh, cuprates are not high temperature superconductors anymore. There is another class of materials uh, which is, uh, has uh, transition temperatures much uh, higher, and it is most likely electron phonon. Uh, and uh, uh, th there is big fight uh, for room temperature. Uh, superconductivity, so that once in a while you get a paper in uh, Nature where people uh, blame it, and then other uh, colleagues uh, tell them it's all nonsense and blah blah blah. What kind of materials? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, as I told, uh, uh, main parameter uh, is this dimensionless constant lambda, which is ratio. Uh, bit, uh, squared ratio between coupling constant and uh, characteristic of the by frequency. Uh, and uh, uh, this is something that, uh, in a sense, plays the role of uh, uh, PCS coupling constant. And uh, important thing is that uh, what we will uh, construct uh, is not uh, just a straightforward uh, field theoretical. Uh, calculations using this uh, Hamiltonian uh, for the following reason, that uh, the uh, phonons that we're dealing with, or these uh, vibrations, they are also uh, strongly renormalized by the uh, electrons. And uh, uh, that's why uh, uh, in original Hamiltonian, you have here uh, K0 and uh, you have uh, if you go to Frehley Hamiltonian omega zero, and then all this gets renormalized by uh, electrons. And uh, building this uh, type of uh, uh, field theoretical approach uh, turned out to be uh, rather uh, complicated because of uh, high order uh, perturbation theory terms being important. But the idea was 
that, uh, okay, we don't know uh, what is uh, the uh, real value of uh, renormalized uh, uh, spring constant, but we also don't know what is uh, the bare value unless we want to use first principles and employ atomic physics, but this is usually not a good idea. We will just start with some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, parameter which all takes into account these renormalizations and uh, we'll build a, a theory of electrons uh, in the uh, influenced by phonons, but phonons will already assume to be uh, uh, to be renormalized by electrons. And uh, this is a result of uh, uh, these two uh, papers. One was uh, a paper of uh, uh, Arkady Migdal. Uh, in, uh, you can see it's about uh, uh, the same as uh, PCS uh, publication. And uh, actually uh, what I know from uh, uh, all the colleagues who remember those times, uh, uh, he was uh, uh, at the time the best expert in uh, this uh, Green's functions and diagram technique, and uh, he decided to build the theory uh, of electron phonon interaction because he knew about uh, this isotope effect and uh, hoped that uh, if he will calculate whatever is possible to calculate, using this uh, uh, electron phonon interaction, he will understand the superconductivity. He uh, did not because the only thing he didn't calculate was exactly uh, this uh, uh, of diagonal uh, pairing uh, because he had no idea that it should be calculated. And after the main idea of uh, superconductive pairing was uh, uh, was uh, uh, established and accepted by the community. Uh, Elashberg, uh, who at that time was in uh, St. Petersburg and Leningrad, and uh, then moved to uh, Landau Institute, he extended Migdal's theory uh, for the uh, theory of superconductivity so that uh, what I will uh, uh, tell you about is called Migdal uh, Elashberg theory of uh, uh, electron from the interaction. So uh, I'm going to uh, skip uh, the uh, technical details uh, because there is some physics to discuss. Uh, to discuss uh, and uh, if you want more details, we can discuss uh, later or you can find them in uh, our paper, which uh, where this uh, details are present. So what you are doing? Uh, you start uh, with uh, uh, this, uh, if you want, uh, uh, Lagrangian that follows from the same Hamiltonian. Lagrangian means that instead of momentum, you have velocity here. Uh, and uh, you, uh, so what these people did were, uh, uh, kind of building the diagram technique and calculating the green functions. But uh, uh, today's uh, uh, approach to that is uh, uh, somewhat uh, more, if not uh, uh, convenient, than more elegant. Uh, what you are doing, you are uh, moving in the following steps. So uh, first of all, uh, you can see that in terms of X, this uh, Lagrangian is uh, quadratic, which means that you can integrate over all these uh, phonon variables. Of course, it is. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm listening. As I remember, Lagrangian has kinetic energy minus potential energy. Uh, okay, maybe. Uh, um, you but see, uh, maybe, no, no, no. Maybe 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 tau I, is imaginary. I imagine it, okay. So, okay. Uh, but there, there can be misprints, so do, I apologize in advance. Uh, so, what are you doing? You, you have to calculate uh, this. this yes. It goes from zero to uh, uh, So, you integrate over uh, these phonon variables, and uh, what you will get since you 
x is coupled with uh, t uh, and c dagger, uh, you will get uh, terms which are fourth order in uh, electronic uh, creation and annihilation operation. And then uh, next step is splitting this uh, quadric terms uh, using uh, uh, the so-called Hubbard certain knowledge fields. Uh, and you can either split it in uh, C dagger C, C dagger C products or uh, in C, C, C dagger, C dagger products. And for this, you need uh, either field uh, sigma. Uh, here we have no uh, spin dependence uh, of the interaction. So uh, this sigma is the same for spin up and spin down. And uh, there is another field uh, we need. Uh, which is uh, pi, uh, which splits this quadric term in CC uh, and then C dagger C dagger. And after this splitting, you get something which is uh, quadratic in electrons and uh, you uh, integrate over them uh, and get effective action in terms of these fields. And uh, for this effective uh, action, you uh, calculate the stationary point, uh, and this is Middal uh, Eliasberg, which you can justify by patterns. Yeah. Do another question. Basically, in this case, you change the full norm as classic, classical field, and uh, you don't, no. you don't, you, you, you don't. Yeah. No, uh, this uh, x, uh, this you can do exactly the same for Frederick Hamilton. But so where's the Einstein boson? Um, no, no, the only difference is that Einstein bosons have no dispersion. They have uh, frequency uh, capital omega. And uh, uh, if in further case, phonons have dispersion. But uh, if uh, uh, we need large frequencies of the phonons, the difference is not big. I will come to that again. But it's, uh, it's not about this one is being classical or quantum uh, because harmonic oscillator is the same, classical and quantum is the same. So, the knowledge fields is the order of parameter. Uh, Hubbard's knowledge fields actually, uh, yeah. Uh, um, one phrase and then I will answer your question. So, you can ask me what is the parameter uh, which allows us to, uh, to restrict ourselves by the uh, uh, stationary point by the minimum uh, this action and not taking into account fluctuations. And the answer is that this theory uh, requires, uh, it doesn't depend on the weakness of electron component interaction, but becomes exact in the limit when Fermi energy uh, is uh, uh, very large. And uh, if you want estimations for normal usual metals, Fermi energy is about uh, one yeah. or several volts, which is 10,000 to 100,000 kelvins. So uh, uh, indeed, uh, this uh, uh, ratio of thermal energy to any other energy, the problem is uh, big enough to, to not to worry about. So parameter is TC or? Either TC or omega. Uh, actually, uh, we are now finishing the paper when we analyze these fluctuations and uh, that sometimes it is, according to Mindal, sometimes a bit different. So it, it's not trivial. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, what do we get if we uh, uh, take? Uh, 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 there is um, there was a question. Uh, uh, what is the meaning of these fields? And uh, in terms of uh, uh, green functions, it's just Sigma is uh, real and uh, uh, is uh, the uh, the normal uh, self energy and uh, uh, phi is complex and it is uh, anomalous self energy. So it has exact analog of this Markov number formula. Okay, so uh, what we can uh, do uh, is to uh, make a uh, Fourier transform and study this uh, sigma and phi, uh, not uh, in time domain, but in frequency domain. And 
uh, since tau changes from zero to beta, which is one over temperature, we have discrete set of frequencies omega n, uh, which are uh, this uh, thermionic uh, Mosubaro frequencies. And uh, that's why uh, this uh, is uh, sigma and phi uh, uh, labeled by uh, integer uh, numbers n and n. And we have uh, these equations, which are equations for, for the uh, station report. And uh, u and m, of course, is u at a different, uh, as a function of difference between uh, the two energies. And uh, yeah, and then it turns out that uh, it is uh, uh, at least uh, uh, useful for, uh, from pedagogical point of view, uh, to uh, introduce instead of phi f, which is determined in this way, uh, and instead of sigma g, which is determined. Uh, just in this way, so there would be convolutions in uh, frequency domain, and uh, they will uh, obey, obey these equations. And the reason why I wrote down these equations is that from them immediately follows the following relation, that g n squared plus m squared equals to 1. You can give the fluctuations in the level of theory. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So right now I'm speaking about an theory. Uh, so uh, these two variables are uh, obeying this stationary point uh, constraint that sum of the squares is equal to one. Uh, and uh, here you can write a real part squared plus imaginary plus squared. And uh, what uh, becomes possible uh, is to uh, introduce effective uh, classical spin S which Z component is uh, GN and uh, X and Y components are real and imaginary parts of F. And uh, it turns out that uh, one can uh, rewrite this Migdal uh, uh, uh theory uh, uh, in terms of uh, classical spin chain. So uh, this is uh, uh, free energy density of Mindalian uh, iceberg, and uh, this is, if you want, Hamiltonian of spin chain, and they are connected uh, with this simple relation. So this is a simple free factor of density of phase interval. So uh, what do we have here? We have a, a spin chain. Sides of spin chains are ends. So this uh, chain is in the uh, uh, energy uh, space because omega n uh, is, remember, is uh, pi temperature times two n plus one. And uh, the first term is, if you want, a uh, uh, magnetic field in z direction. So magnetic field in z direction uh, is uh, in one uh, direction for positive n, in opposite direction for uh, negative n uh, and uh, and uh, uh, omega cannot be equal to zero because it's thermal. And there is second term, and this second term is uh, uh, the uh, Heisenberg uh, type spin-spin uh, interaction, uh, which is not short range but rather uh, long range. So uh, for uh, distances in energy space. Uh, smaller uh, than uh, omega, uh, this uh, uh, is uh, distance independent. And for distances bigger than omega, it, it decays as uh, inverse square of the distance. So you have this strange uh, spin chain. Uh, and uh, at this moment, uh, I have, yeah, and uh, what uh, does it mean is that um, in principle, it can be considered as a Hamiltonian, even for classical spin. And Hamiltonian has ground states and excited states, but what is we really guarantee is that ground state of this Hamiltonian corresponds to the uh, minimal uh, 
action of the uh, of the amygdala there. So, yeah. What is minus one? Yeah. Uh, it was it's uh, uh, forget about it. Well, forget about it. This, this yeah. is number. Uh, okay, I can turn this down and that's it. Uh, uh, I think uh, it's so written it's here me, uh, to uh, yeah to uh, if n equals to m. Uh, and you're just shifting yeah. some some energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero. Yeah. So far, it's uh, the level of mean field superconducting. Uh, uh, analogy. Uh, what is what term is correspond to what the usual word? Uh, uh, let me uh, uh, wait uh, uh, two minutes and then ask this question. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what I want to uh, compare is uh, this spin chain with uh, effective uh, theory, uh, which is due to Phil Anderson and uh, involves uh, Anderson spins. So, uh, in that case, we're dealing purely with uh, BCS interaction. We start with uh, the uh, one particle. Uh, spectrum that uh, contains certain uh, levels, certain orbitals. Suppose we are dealing with finite size uh, superconducting grain. Uh, so there are uh, quantum, one particle quantum states uh, and uh, orbitals. Uh, people in nuclear physics like, like this approach very much. And uh, uh, there you can also introduce uh, uh, some spins, but they are uh, quantum. Not classified. So, uh, in order to proceed, uh, uh, people uh, introduce uh, orbitals which are single occupied, either with spin up or spin down. And they are, for the reason which uh, will become clear in a moment, they are called blocked orbitals. And uh, this is in contrast with so called unblocked orbitals, which are either uh, double occupied with spin up and spin down and uh, empty. And uh, uh, if we forget about the blocked orbitals, either uh, there is no one uh, or uh, we simply forget about them because they are not involved in the, uh, in the BCS Hamiltonian, uh, what you, we can tell is that uh, there are pseudo spins that live on each orbital. And uh, spin, uh, uh, let's say spin uh, up, or spin, uh, corresponds uh, to uh, uh, to double occupied orbital, and spin uh, down uh, corresponds to empty one. May I ask you? Yeah. Question: the, the plasma spin S in your previous slide, the square of S equals one. Uh, but classical okay. means that uh, its uh, its uh, components are not quantized. I see that the did they indicate that uh, uh, this uh, some some stage uh, oh. is S the already photo? No, no, classical. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that we just uh, three variables uh, uh, with constraint that the uh, sums of squares equals to one. I see. Mm -hmm. So uh, then what is BCS interaction? Uh, there is, uh, uh, in addition to this one uh, particle set of uh, states, uh, you have a term uh, which basically uh, can take a pair of uh, particles from uh, one orbital, let's say beta, and put it on the uh, other orbital, uh, which is out. And vice versa. So, uh, uh, from the point of view of spin operators is uh, sigma plus times sigma minus. And uh, what we get uh, uh, in this case uh, will be Hamiltonian notation, uh, which is, uh, uh, which has first term that is nothing but kinetic energy. You see epsilon uh, times uh, uh, one if orbital is occupied, uh, and double occupied, uh, and there is two for that. And uh, if this, uh, uh, this orbital doesn't contribute in H0, is sigma z is equal to minus one. 
And in addition to that, uh, you have this XY interaction because sigma plus plus sigma minus is nothing but uh, XY. Uh, I, will, I will not uh, uh, go again into details. Uh, you can, it, from this XY interaction, get to uh, Heisenberg. Uh, it's not, uh, if you fix the number of electrons. So uh, there are very uh, uh, similar uh, approaches, but they are uh, different at the same time. So first of all, uh, for uh, BCS uh, story, uh, you uh, equally uh, connect any pair of orbitals within this energy interval from zero to the uh, bifrequency. And here, uh, the uh, interaction still depends uh, on the distance. And uh, most importantly, these are classical spins. These are, uh, these are spins one half. This is Hamiltonian. Uh, this is uh, the uh, the free energy uh, in the equilibrium. So, uh, in principle, uh, we cannot analyze it. Uh, analyze excited states of the superconductor using this approach, although something uh, still uh, maybe they uh, suggest. So this is a different story, and uh, uh, this we understood with Emil uh, already when he was my student uh, about 20 years ago uh, at Princeton. Uh, and uh, then it was just uh, in the table uh, after, before we started to think about these problems again. So what is the solution uh, uh, for uh, this Hamiltonian? You have uh, negative frequencies uh, and uh, positive frequencies. And if we forget about the interaction, uh, all this will go uh, down uh, and all this will go up. And uh, this is uh, this spin arrangement corresponds to the, uh, uh, to the normal state. And uh, what is superconducting state? Uh, the system is unhappy because interaction uh, between uh, the spins that are close to uh, zero that are, uh, have uh, involve electrons close to the uh, Fermi level. Uh, this interaction uh, uh, is costly in terms of energy. And what system decides to do is instead of making a sharp uh, transition, it makes kind of continuous transition and the whole region uh, in energy, because remember this direction is energy. Uh, the whole region in energy uh, is uh, nothing but uh, superconducting order power. And uh, of course, uh, it is determined by uh, this uh, Fn, uh, the anomalous, uh, uh, self energy, uh, which is zero in normal state and uh, non zero in, in superconducting state. And uh, in terms of spins, it is nothing but in plane uh, that uh, component of the spin uh, in plane. So, this is uh, the uh, theory of our, trans uh, of our superconducting uh, transition. And it's not really a transition, right? Because it happens at any small values of the interaction. No, 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 no. Uh, here uh, we can. Uh, it was uh, like this uh, for in Anderson case, but here uh, there is uh, intrinsic temperature dependence because these sides, the distance between the sides, it depends on the temperature. And if temperature is too high. There is no transition, and for temperature that is lower, there is. Yeah. Is it correct to understand that you, in this theory, you introduce exchange by formals, two electron exchange by formals? Yes. And this exchange in energy, I mean, you remain formals, create you n, this n additional chain. Uh, no, uh, this, no. This, 
you know, the chain is created by the uh, fact that we're in thermal equilibrium. So, uh, no, no transparent physical uh, no, uh, again, uh, if you have orbitals, then each side is an orbit. Yeah. And uh, if uh, you have very, very uh, dense uh, orbitals, yeah. but temperature is uh, uh, finite, then each layer in energy is kind of, uh, creates you kind of spin. But because it involves many orbitals, the spin is not uh, quantum, but classic, if you want uh, it like that. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. I do. Take your Hamilton and in the chair temperature. No, no, it's okay. not, no, 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 no. It's, this is not zero temperature because uh, I'm okay. And then uh, what's the bottom of zero? But Hamilton and how to change? No, uh, if uh, if temperature goes to zero, uh, then my omega n and omega m uh, no, 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 no. Uh, omega n equals to temperature times pi yeah, yeah, yeah. times two n plus one. Yeah. Oh, so uh, in this sum, uh, you uh, get more and more terms. So it's still important. So instead of the sum, you get something like the integral of this uh, certain weight. You can you can uh, transform this sum into integral uh, by you know. Uh, transforming the contour in complex plane. Uh, but uh, uh, from here, you can uh, write something in the middle, uh, in the limit of zero temperature, but you also can analyze what's going on at finite temperature. Uh, my question is related to the, what is your effective high jump of interaction as a function of the temperature? In this what is the effective Heisenberg interaction at what? As a function of the temperature, the function yeah. of the what? Effective Heisenberg. No, uh, interaction is here, but yeah, yeah, what yeah. changes with temperature yeah. is the lattice itself. So uh, distance between sides and the lattice is proportioned to, proportion to temperature. It's the distance of much more of that approach. Yeah. And is that so interaction is enhanced, right? No, because there is this term, so yeah. it's not increasing, but you have more and more spins. Uh, so the system has more and more uh, sides when you uh, go to lower and lower temperature. Okay. So just a uh, remark uh, that in principle, uh, there are interesting uh, excited states of this Hamiltonian uh, where, uh, for example, uh, instead of normal state, we have, we, Flip some spins because it still will be uh, um, uh, eigenstate of uh, the of this Hamiltonian. Uh, I don't know if it has any meaning or not, but in principle, uh, this can uh, show up in uh, long uh, time uh, dynamics. But for probably would be relevant uh, in the case, uh, because you say the parameter for the saddle point approximation is EF. Yeah. So probably if EF uh, becomes smaller and smaller, this other, because these are other saddle points, right? No, no, but th that's true. But uh, those are what we normally call uh, uh, quasi-particles. But here, these quasi-particles are more, uh, you know, uh, in order to uh, flip two spins, you have to create four quasi particles, two uh, and yeah. two. And uh, I don't know if there are different quasi particles with different times. So let's leave it alone. The only thing I want to emphasize is uh, that there are uh, excited states of this Hamiltonian, but uh, what we know for sure is only that its ground state corresponds to the um, uh, to the uh, Free energy uh, of the of the system. Yeah, but are these eigenstates corresponding to other saddle points or not? Uh, it, uh, no, no. Uh, it may be another saddle point, but it's not the. the it's not the. It's not. It's not yeah. the. Let's say the leading yeah. saddle so, point. Uh, okay. Normally, this uh, uh, so-called classical solutions give you mm. uh, some exponential corrections or whatever. This is something to uh, think about. I see. Okay, uh, now uh, 
just uh, to uh, support the statement that uh, for what I want to uh, discuss, namely uh, large lambdas, it is uh, not as important which Hamiltonian uh, I take. So uh, if we are still dealing with the constain, uh, then uh, large lambda means that either a small uh, omega or uh, as a, for example, because uh, uh, K is very small, so limit of uh, independent, uh, independent guys. But uh, uh, this type of the uh, Hamiltonian, uh, we still will get uh, in a more general case, uh, the only thing uh, is that instead of this UNM, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, uh, simply one over omega n minus omega m squared plus omega squared, we have to uh, uh, calculate this convolution. But uh, since omega q uh, cannot be bigger uh, than uh, the wave frequency, uh, the uh, larger n than m, larger than uh, uh, than uh, the wave frequency, uh, we can neglect uh, one, uh, one, and then uh, what we will get, we still will get at larger distances interaction that decays as inverse square of data. May I ask? Yeah. The limit, uh, the free ion uh, limit means that the system is liquid and the solid. Uh, well, not, not exactly, because uh, we are not allowing big shifts, we are only allowing oscillation. Right. So, so it's yes. like. Uh, uh, but the refinement uh, very weak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, now uh, suppose uh, I will. Uh, study uh, what is going on when lambda is large. In this limit, uh, this is what I uh, should use. And uh, you can uh, calculate this transition temperature, uh, which is uh, uh, proportional, uh, of course, to omega, just from uh, dimension uh, consideration. And, uh, proportional to square root of lambda, and to, there is a prefactor which is 0.18. And uh, from this point of view, if uh, you will manage to create uh, lambda uh, uh, very large, then you can uh, get TC also uh, very large, uh, and uh, in principle uh, can hope that it's uh, unbounded. Now let's uh, uh, dig into this uh, statement uh, that TC is unbounded a little bit deeper. Yeah. Turn this down to the limit. Yeah. Uh, do you can stick on electrons and photons, or you stick about around? You always two steps. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I would love to to uh, continue discussion. So. Uh, what I propose to calculate is using uh, this uh, free energy, uh, and we know the solution in normal state, which is one half occupied, one half empty. We can calculate the uh, specific heat. And I have to tell that uh, one system that is uh, described by Hamiltonian, which is temperature independent, it's uh, uh, Mathematical theorem with a simple proof that uh, specific heat is possible. You need to spend energy in order to uh, increase the temperature. But uh, this thing uh, depends on temperature in a kind of unusual way because uh, our lattice uh, uh, depends on the temperature. And uh, what uh, we can do, uh, we can calculate specific heat of this uh, free energy. And uh, it can be done uh, quite straightforwardly. Uh, this is uh, first and second uh, derivative of gamma function. Uh, 
it's uh, uh, not a very big deal. Uh, but if you uh, will plot it at different lambdas, so 0 0.5, 3, 4.5, uh, as a function uh, of uh, temperature, you will find that for small lambdas, uh, it has uh, at uh, low temperatures certain a peak, uh, but then it remains uh, uh, positive uh, and uh, pretty close to uh, thermal liquid uh, specific heat. But uh, when you uh, go to a stronger coupling, it gets uh, uh, this peak gets bigger and the rock gets smaller. And then at certain uh, critical uh, lambda, uh, there appears uh, an interval uh, in temperatures where specific heat is needed. Uh, I have to tell uh, uh, that uh, we did not, uh, we were not first to derive this formula. You can dig it. Uh, in a number of papers, but nobody actually uh, discussed it uh, at higher lambdas, and uh, this is the uh, the result. Now, uh, what uh, we can tell about this? There is this interval uh, of temperatures where specific heat is negative, which means that our lattice is uh, unstable. So uh, we maybe uh, uh, can keep it stable at uh, high temperatures, but as soon as you will uh, cool it uh, below this temperature T plus, uh, it will be unstable and something bad will happen with our system. What will happen, uh, we will discuss a little bit later. And uh, it turns out that uh, while uh, Tc is 0.18 square root of lambda for light lambda, there is uh, this T plus is uh, almost twice as big. So before system uh, gets into superconducting state, it will uh, actually collapse. Which means uh, that uh, lambda uh, should be bounded. We cannot uh, go uh, too high with lambda. And uh, the reason is exactly what you were uh, telling, that strong electron phonon interaction uh, makes electrons uh, to uh, dictate their uh, their wills in terms of what kind of lattice uh, they want to have. It's not that uh, uh, our ions for the lattice and then electrons go and fill the uh, bands that are uh, created uh, by ions. They want to uh, re uh, reconstruct it. So it turns out uh, that uh, at least this is the result for uh, uh, for uh, Einstein phonons, uh, that uh, this uh, Magdalene Ashberg theory breaks down uh, for lambdas bigger than lambda C, which is uh, about uh, 3.7. Uh, when you go to uh, uh, different uh, phonon spectra, and uh, there is a lot known uh, about uh, on spectra and uh, effective function u, which is normally uh, called a Lashberg function. Uh, I remember uh, Robert was one of the uh, uh, theorists who uh, uh, who led the paved the way of measuring uh, this Lashberg function in a completely different way uh, using so-called microcontacts, and it was big deal. Uh, in Kharkov, low, low temperature physics institute. Uh, so lambda C can uh, somewhat uh, change uh, uh, depending on the uh, Hamiltonian, but uh, it cannot be much bigger than that. Now, what do we know? Uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's very bad quality, uh, but the only thing I wanted to tell is that uh, in uh, old uh, uh, reference books, this is 1990, uh, the uh, lambdas uh, for the different materials uh, are uh, usually small. There is one material with lambda equal to uh, three uh, 
this is uh, uh, led with something it doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, for a while it was not uh, a big deal, uh, but then, uh, as I told, uh, there appeared uh, a, a new class of materials uh, which uh, becomes more and more uh, popular. So what are we doing with this? In fact, uh, when I was uh, uh, just a uh, starting student, uh, there was a big uh, topic uh, called atomic uh, hydrogen. Remember? Uh, so idea was the following, that uh, one of the ways uh, of getting uh, high TC is to make the by frequency very high. And in order to make the by frequency high, uh, you need to make uh, uh, lattice with very light atoms. And what can be lighter than uh, hydrogen? Uh, but hydrogen was a uh, uh, material uh, which uh, normally, even in a solid uh, form, is not metallic. So people started to make calculations what happens if we uh, make pressure on the hydrogen. And uh, theoretically, there were some arguments in favor of it becoming uh, metallic. Then it was a big deal. Uh, where influential people get involved, they started a new uh, research lab called High uh, Pressure Institute uh, near Moscow. And then there was a big scandal because uh, they published uh, something which was uh, is a fraud or big mistake. Uh, so I thought uh, by the time that its story is gone, and uh, very recently, only after we published this paper uh, with uh, Emil Yusbashan, uh, some experimentalists uh, uh, told us and sent us material uh, that actually there are uh, these uh, uh, materials uh, ho called uh, hydrates. Uh, and basically, you see uh, the compound. It's uh, lanthanum and hydrogen, but there are 10 atoms of hydrogen for one lanthanum, or uh, yttrium and nine. Uh, or something like this. And uh, the uh, experimentally, uh, this is uh, calculations uh, using some models, and of course, uh, we've seen Yigdal and Yarsberg theory, uh, but uh, experimentally, uh, they claim that they can uh, stand behind this 230, 260 uh, transition temperature, which is not room temperature, it's pretty cold, if we will, but it's still much higher than all operates can give us. And of course, there is some hope that uh, it can be done uh, made even bigger. But in, in this yeah. case, the, the by energy is even larger, right? Yeah. In this case, the by uh, uh, frequency, uh, let, let me see uh, where it is. Uh, yeah. Most uh, so, uh, you see, uh, here we have, it's uh, now not a good idea to call it the bifrequency, it's called omega log. It's uh, some average of uh, uh, of uh, quantum frequencies. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, energy divided by energy integral. Anyway, uh, it's uh, for us, it's the same as the bifrequency is, and uh, uh, as you can see, uh, people are speaking about, I don't know, uh, more, almost 2,000. Yeah, but then again, you have to take uh, this version into account. You cannot just... Right, right, right. right. Is that okay? No, but again, when we speak about this uh, high temperatures, this is not as important. You have, uh, with, in terms of numbers, you have and, uh, uh, a lot of uh, numerics still should be done, uh, but... Uh, but uh, this guy, uh, Dmitry Semenok, uh, who is experimentalist in the group that uh, studies that, uh, what he uh, plotted is, uh, this is a plane, here is uh, 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 strengths, and here is what we call uh, Dubai frequency. And uh, uh, you can see uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah, so there are some materials uh, which he calls important in the, uh, and he signed what it is, uh, and some materials uh, 
uh, that are not important, not signed, but open circles is uh, experimental data. And closed uh, uh, points or whatever is just uh, calculations. And uh, this is what he thinks is the uh, highest uh, DC. Uh, and basically, these dashed lines are, uh, uh, are uh, uh, lines of constant uh, TC, uh, which are uh, according to some uh, numerical uh, model. So uh, idea is the following, that uh, you want, in order to get uh, high temperature superconductivity, uh, you want both large lambda and large uh, frequency. But uh, it turns out uh, that it is, and this we will discuss, that it is difficult to uh, get in advance. And what uh, people found is even uh, the uh, numerical models that people use never go beyond this uh, 3.7 and down. Wait a second. Yeah. Correct me, maybe I'm wrong. I sort of remember that in uh, Elias Borodnikdal, they, they exploited this M over M ratio, adiabatic approximation in electronic and magnetic system. Mm -hmm. And you want to go beyond this? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is the same as uh, ratio between Fermi energy and, yes, yes. and, and uh, yeah. no, no, no. Here, Fermi energies are still high, uh, but uh, the the story is different. It's not about uh, large or small Fermi energy. J j just a little bit. So, what uh, turns out that indeed looks like uh, nobody came even with. Uh, uh, Imagination uh, with material that in certain model uh, will give you lambda bigger than this 3.7, but who knows? But at least uh, experimentally, we are still uh, uh, far, far from this. But it's important that uh, something like this uh, exists because, as I told, there is this problem with uh, specific heat. Now, uh, one more uh, thing that uh, I want to attract your attention uh, to. This is uh, pressure. And uh, pressure, uh, uh, for example, for this material, look for this material, doesn't matter. Uh, high pressure gives you a uh, certain lambda uh, and uh, uh, even higher uh, uh, frequency. Uh, MUV is about 10 Kelvin, so it's and uh, a certain uh, DC. Then you uh, reduce the pressure uh, and the lambda gets bigger, and uh, this increase in lambda overwhelms this decrease in uh, frequency and uh, temperature increases. Then you reduce the pressure again uh, and temperature increases again, uh, and finally you increase it. Uh, uh, decrease it even more, uh, and you get this uh, uh, this uh, result. It, it's not experimental, but still uh, even higher temperature. And uh, then uh, the question is, why not to keep uh, decreasing the temperature? Uh, I don't know what happens in their models, uh, because uh, they still plot uh, that uh, TC reaches maximum and then goes down. But experimentally, uh, at lower temperatures, system doesn't exist right. as it is lower at, lower, at lower pressures. Uh, it uh, starts to lose hydrogen and basically is not uh, itself anymore. So uh, this is what uh, they observe, but uh, uh, this is again, uh, uh, this is. Uh, results of some uh, uh, numerical calculations, but based on uh, migdal Ashberg theory. Uh, but uh, I don't know uh, what, they, uh, what they have here. And uh, normally uh, what they uh, want to tell is that this, what they call uh, maximal uh, critical temperature, uh, if uh, you can get enough omega uh, and lambda, 
uh, and it turns out that uh, when you start uh, to uh, increase pressure, uh, you have this uh, scylla uh, that reduces lambda, and when you uh, go to lower temperatures, uh, in, you uh, reduce uh, omega, and uh, there is something more optimal. And as you can see, uh, some people are optimistic enough uh, that uh, uh, allow to hope for uh, for room temperature. Now, uh, let me speculate a little. So, uh, why a uh, system is unstable? when electron phonon interaction gets strong. The reason is that uh, electrons have their own way of uh, reducing the, uh, the energy. The easiest thing is to create a gap uh, on the thermal end. And uh, sometimes they can do it easily uh, by uh, slightly uh, reconstructing the lattice. For instance, in one dimension, uh, there is the famous spirals uh, period doubling, uh, which for a half field uh, band creates a gap uh, in the middle and reduces the energy, uh, even uh, in spite of the fact that you have to pay something by increasing the elastic. And uh, it's very likely that uh, the, uh, uh, the instability that we observed uh, from uh, specific heat uh, is uh, uh, for the same reason that uh, for uh, large enough lambda electrons uh, want to uh, to change the lattice uh, in order to create either a gap or reduce dramatically the uh, the uh, density of states near the terminal uh, and uh, by this reduce them. Uh, now, uh, the point is uh, that uh, this normally would create the insulating gap, but uh, effect of superconductivity also creates a gap uh, and also reduces the energy of electrons. And uh, the question is uh, uh, which gap system prefers to Really. And remember, uh, the uh, temperature of uh, the uh, instability was twice as high as superconducting uh, temperature, uh, which means uh, that probably if you simply call your system, you will uh, first uh, get into uh, this uh, instability. But uh, there is quite interesting possibility. So uh, suppose we again uh, go uh, to temperature dependence and uh, uh, we start with uh, high uh, pressures and uh, this uh, transition temperature gets higher, 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 and then you get to some, uh, uh, some uh, value of pressure uh, where the system uh, either starts to collapse or for some other reason uh, reduces its uh, uh, is transition temperature, uh, which uh, means uh, that uh, if we uh, at high temperatures or even at these temperatures uh, uh, will reduce pressure, we will get uh, uh, we will not get superconductivity. But let us do the following: let us first stay at uh, uh, high pressure and. Uh, Reduce temperature uh, in, a, uh, in a way that you uh, uh, that we get into superconducting state. So we reduce temperature below Tc at this pressure, and then uh, let's uh, cool our system. So we remain uh, at uh, uh, at superconducting state, and then uh, what happens if we'll start to heat it? It could be uh, that uh, because we already have superconducting gap, it will uh, stabilize our system and uh, prevent it from uh, collapsing. And uh, strange enough, something like this was observed 
not for these hydrates, but for uh, interesting uh, compound. Uh, or I didn't write it anywhere. It's uh, some uh, alloy of uh, iron and selenium. Uh, okay, I, I will tell you what is what. So uh, this is uh, uh, transition temperature uh, at low pressure. So this is pressure. And uh, at low pressure, it's somewhere around uh, 10 Kelvin. Now, if you go to uh, higher uh, pressure uh, above, uh, uh, let's say, 4 GP, uh, you get a transition temperature close to 40 Kelvin, so four times bigger. And what these people claim is that if they will do the following, if they will uh, cool uh, the system uh, at this pressure and uh, uh, at uh, helium temperature, uh, reduce pressure to uh, uh, what they called ambient, so normal or whatever they have, uh, then you get uh, your material that has transition temperature about uh, uh, the same 40 Kelvin. And uh, the claim in the paper is that uh, this is uh, uh, this survives for at least seven days. So indeed, there is uh, quasi-stable because uh, you cannot reach the state simply uh, by uh, uh, by cooling your system in the uh, in, in the low temperature, but you can reach it if it is only in superconductor, and then you uh, heat it again. So I think this allows quite a bit of uh, interesting things, uh, especially if we believe that uh, uh, the uh, reduction of the pressure will. Uh, increase the transition temperature even more. Okay, now, uh, I, in principle, I have uh, another 10 or 15 minutes piece, but it looks like I already spent too much time, so maybe uh, it's enough and uh, we can uh, discuss what is already done. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Boris, for this very nice presentation. Questions? Yes, thank you. Um, I have one comment. Uh, I, will, I can give you one more hope uh, for this uh, uh, high temperature superconducting state. It is if you take into account the lattice and commensurability of size of per Fermi surface in lattice, because any charge density wave is extremely uh, vulnerable. To incommensurability effects. Mm -hmm. So it happens in these cuprates because you know that there is like a dome of charge density waves exactly around commensurability one third, something like that. And superconductivity nice to live uh, nearby that point. So uh, I think that if you take into account lattice, uh, your, your superconducting state can be pretty safe uh, in this scenario. Uh, yeah, well, well about cuprates. Uh... I had reservations because I don't know whether people still uh, are sure that it's 100% not phonons or- It doesn't matter. I'm yeah. just saying that you know, really, it is the truth that charge density wave critical temperature is higher than superconducting mm -hmm. one. But unless you have incommensurability of mm -hmm. Fermi surface the lattice, it will be like, uh, they call it pneumatic, like sp okay. broken spaghetti. Charge density waves and superconductivity will prevail. Uh, good idea. We can discuss. Maybe uh, we can analyze uh, uh, thermodynamics and specific heat for, for this system. But I, I understand what you're. And, and you one more comment, if I may. I mean, all that you said has been based mainly on, on Froelich type of uh, reasoning. So you have really a constant to put it. It, it is. Uh, for electron form concept, you put it in front of your summation and then you do and obtain your result. And we know, I, I forgot the original authors, but in, in Scholem's textbook, it's only stay tuned. We know that electron form constant can be derived starting from atomic orbitals. And then it is proportional to, uh, to 
gradient of transfer integral, time binding approximation transfer integral. So if you, if you construct that picture and take into look shifts of atoms, uh, you come to the points in which you can really have some soft phonon mode and very strongly coupled. So your lambda would be huge. But unfortunately, it is present not on the not along the whole virulent zone, but only in certain it's momentum dependent very much. It, it, it's localized in a, in, a, in, a, in momentum space. Unfortunately, you cannot take it out. If you are some, you, you need to put it inside. Do you think if you if we say that you must reduce your summation over all momenta and stick it to only one portion of the zone, that your reasoning can still be uh, considered? Uh, well, it depends where in the brilliance. Mm -hmm. As I told, uh, you need both. You need uh, you don't you don't want soft modes. You want as hard mode as possible. No, no, but lambda is proportional to g square over h omega. So yes, the yes, smaller yes, omega yes. is the larger yes. is lambda. Uh, yes, but uh, refractor is still omega, and uh, this is uh, the uh, the situation uh, which. Uh, Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, but uh, either uh, you uh, increase uh, omega and decrease lambda, or uh, uh, increase lambda and decrease omega, uh, it's still not optimal. You you, ah. you need both. You, you need both okay. for, for high TC. But uh, for, for what I guess I, I want to tell is that there is a lot. Uh, what people handled, uh, yet, uh, understood in uh, high, uh, uh, in strongly coupled uh, component systems uh, that uh, probably should be put into this theory. Uh, I'm not very uh, mature that existing models are very powerful. Uh, they were, I mean, McDowell and Arvid theory was very successful for simple materials. But when they go to this nuance, it starts to become questionable in different approaches to have different results. So, so uh, last thing I want to tell is that it's a field that is open and maybe will be uh, flourishing for a while. Thank you. Okay, more questions? Yeah, cool. so in the strong inductive limit, uh, uh, why you still think that there's no other interaction can come out in, in the strong coupling limit? Yeah. Why don't you use a theory with the, the, the other interaction, but it have other interaction can come out from the AZ flow, right? Uh, oh, RD oh, flow. Yeah. Uh, as RD as flow. It can uh, come in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, RG, uh, usually you go when you uh, start with uh, small distances and the go to bigger and bigger distances. And here we are already at a uh, very short distance. We want to, uh, high TC means uh, a very strongly coupled uh, Cooper pairs and uh, interaction uh, with very uh, high energy uh, excitation. So I don't think uh, just RG itself can be a very, uh, very good approach. Uh, besides uh, uh, this instability, uh, I know that instability exists, but uh, honestly, I, I don't think there is one universal theory of uh, the final state. If we let it uh, develop this instability, uh, whether it would be first order transition or second order transition or uh, whatever transition, and uh, these questions are connected with the uh, you know, the existence of metallic glasses and uh, uh, melting. And, and so uh, there is a lot of uh, stuff which people were not really digging into because it's too complicated. Maybe now it's... So, so maybe, maybe my, my, my question is uh, how, how, how reliable your last first theory with this strong topic, how reliable... Uh, no, uh, no, no. Uh, you see, uh, we know what happens in the uh, Eliasberg uh, migdal limit, which is Fermi energy to infinity, and at strong lambda. 
And we know that lambda cannot be too strong. There is some limit. Uh, right now, uh, we have calculated exact number only for uh, for Einstein phonons. But uh, in principle, there are formulas which uh, yet to be uh, analyzed numerically for uh, for real uh, phonon spectra and uh, real Eliasberg functions. And uh, uh, this, uh, the fact that there is a limit for uh, maximal lambda that can uh, exist without, uh, uh, without violating the stability of the lattice, uh, I think uh, it is reliable. Now, uh, calculation lambda from the first principles you see, I'm from condensed matter theory. I'm not from atomic physics. I don't believe in first principle calculations. There are always something you don't take into account. <laughs> but, uh, but on the other hand, if, if somebody will, uh, can do all, all these models they, uh, that people use, uh, they are uh, in this or that way connected with. So, basically, you believe that's uh, in instability is that you prefer with real, but not because of the limit. Of uh, no, uh, I think that this instability is real. And uh, the question is uh, uh, quantitative theory of uh, what is the limit and what is uh, what are corrections to all that. Uh, and there is MGDAL parameter, and when it is MGDAL parameter, when corrections are going along it, when not. Uh, and uh, there are many, many questions. Uh, which I still don't know how to answer, but certain basic statements that lambda cannot go to infinity, as people uh, still, most of the people uh, who are in the field uh, believe that in principle there is no uh, no upper limit for lambda. I think uh, this uh, is what I'm pretty sure. All right, last question, Robert. Many years ago, there was activity of so, uh, superconductor with strong coupling. Mm -hmm. Do you think that your version of the theory allows you to go closer to instability for uh, correction? Uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, because, as I told, it's not uh, even new approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, basically already arrived uh, in a uh, Really, uh, equation for uh, uh, specific here, and within uh, the uh, domain of applicability of our approach, we see that uh, it becomes negative. Uh, but if you dig into all the publications, yeah. these formulas are there, yeah. and there is no yeah. reason not to believe them. Yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, Boris will be with us until the end of May or even beginning of June, if I remember correctly. So I think you have uh, lots of time to uh, talk with him about uh, these uh, theories on conductivity and raising TC. So let us thank Boris again. Thank you very much. Thank you.